Good morning all. So you're probably familiar with this, it's a rotary potentiometer. Um, you just apply ground on one side and on the other side your voltage. And then the center pin you can use analog read to get the value. As you turn it, it goes from 0 to 1024. And they're very handy for adjusting values on the fly or maybe as a controller in a game or turning the volume up and down. And there's another type of potentiometer, it's a, a linear potentiometer, and as the name suggests, um, instead of um, adjusting the value or the resistance uh, by turning a knob, you slide a slider. What makes this one interesting is that on the underside, it has a small DC motor, and this small motor is connected to the slider via a pulley, and it can move it backwards and forwards. So the first thing I did was hook it up to my Arduino, um, as you can see, we have the, the voltage, the ground, and the lead that I'm going to analog read. And then I made a quick sketch that does just that. And then as I slide the potentiometer backwards and forwards, I get readings from 0 to 1024. Now the motor on the other side isn't a stepper motor or a servo. I can't tell it to go to a certain point. I can only tell it to, to spin in one direction or the other. But in conjunction with the value from the potentiometer, I can spin it in one direction until it reaches a certain value, then tell it to stop, which allows me to do some interesting things. So first up, um, I have it driving to points along the line and then rewinding back to the beginning. And because this is, isn't a step or a servo, it doesn't complain much if you interrupt it with your, your hand. You can feel it pushing against your finger, but it doesn't, it doesn't seem to cause any damage. Now, instead of telling the motor to turn 100% in one direction or the other, I can use one of the Arduino PWM pins in a motor controller. So what this allows me to do is to alter the power being delivered to the motor. So in this example, the further away the slider is from zero, uh, the more torque I apply to the motor, which makes it feel very much like there's a spring um, involved. And to show this on camera, as it's very hard for me to show what it actually feels like, I'm using a spring to pull it, and you'll see that the length of the spring increases the further towards the left I get. You can also see that if I move it a small amount, it doesn't return very quickly, but if I move it a large amount, it, it springs back pretty quick modifying the code slightly, we can actually simulate uh, a spring in both directions. So here the slider is trying to return to the center point, and as I pull it um, left and right, you'll see that it springs back. In another quick example I wrote, um, I simulate uh, six notches, where as you approach each uh, each notch, you feel a, a resistance and then it, it snaps in. Uh, another way of me showing this is to just quickly grab a screwdriver. You'll see that as I force it across, that snaps into another notch. And it wants to stay in that notch until it gets to the next one. Then it wants to stay in that one. So for a game or for selecting values, this would be very good. You could, you could say, right, select between any of these five values and then have the slider have five notches in it. And then on the next menu screen, you could say, select between these 10 values and you could have 10 notches. But what I'm interested in using this for is uh, providing force feedback as a remote control to a robot of which the internals are not visible to the operator. So this would allow me to feel when the robot is encountering an obstacle or straining to go up a hill or leaning to the left or leaning to the right through the controls. Uh, more on that later. Thanks for watching.